All right, let's talk about managing multiple takes when you're recording multiple microphones at once. All right, so I've kind of set up a little desktop demo for you all. So what I have here, I have the microphone I'm speaking into for the sake of the YouTube video, but then I have two microphones that we're gonna use for the demo within Pro Tools here. So it's all kind of within my desk here. So I have my um, a couple of my Tascam mics. So I have this one, which is the TM80. It's just like their, one of their condenser mics. It comes with this cute little stand and, and the cable too, which is nice. So it comes with like everything that you need. And then I have the TM82, I believe. Yeah, the 82, which is kind of more of like a live mic. Um, so I have these set up. And just for anyone that's curious about what my setup is here, what the signal flow is here, I have the Tascam TM80 is going into input one on my patch bay, the Tascam TM82 is going into the input two on my patch bay. And what that corresponds to are inputs one and input two on my Great River preamp. So that's the MP2NV, I believe, preamp. So I have that and then that's going into my Apollo interface. So within Pro Tools, what I'm gonna do, and this is kind of something that's good for tracking no matter what you're doing, right, is to rename my tracks based on what they're gonna be. So I'm gonna have this be the TM80. And then I'm going to, sorry, I'm like reaching between a sea of cables here, um, TM82. So that's one and two. And I'm gonna set these. So on my computer, this is what I have for those inputs. Doesn't make the most sense, but here we are. Um, cool, so I have these two mics set up and then I have just for demonstration purposes, this, these are um, other tracks that kind of depict other, other instruments within your session. So sometimes this happens, right? Like you might have the drums or whatever. And then you might have, you know, usually I have multiple tracks for drums, but you get the idea, like this is other stuff. So, um, so what I like to do when I'm recording multiple mics, and a lot of times this might be like multiple mics on a drum kit, or it might be, for example, like a DI and then a microphone on a guitar, or it might be multiple microphones on a guitar. Um, whatever it is, right? A lot of times we will have multiple inputs coming in that we wanna record at once and it they correspond to the same exact sound source. So that means that for every single take that I do with the one, I'm also gonna be doing the same take with the others, right? And then, you know, we might blend them differently in like verse versus chorus or what have you, but that's like a mixing thing, right? So we're talking about tracking. So what I like to do right off the bat is name the, the, the tracks just like I did here. And that's so when the audio file is generated, it's gonna have the name of the track instead of like audio one, right? So that helps you stay organized with your clip list later. It helps you stay organized with your audio files folder later. It's really good. So the other thing I like to do is I like to group them. So since these are going to be the same instrument, it's just going to be me talking for this example, because like, you know, I'm lame, but um, I'm going to do command G to create a group. And since I already have the nameplates highlighted for the, these two tracks, it's going to automatically create those in the group. And I can now add and remove stuff if I want. But since I have them highlighted, I know that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna say like Kato's vocals, super exciting. So now I have a group down here for those tracks. I'm gonna leave it active because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start recording. So I'm going to record enable these two. Now we're gonna hear both, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mute it so that we're not listening to, to three microphones at once of me talking. Um, but you know, in this example, you just have to imagine that it's like a singer or something or some other instrument, right? And so now since they're grouped, you'll notice as I click around, it has my cursor on both tracks as opposed to a track that is not grouped where it's just on the one track, right? And then also if I mute or unmute or solo or anything, it's gonna affect both. So that's kind of one of those fun things. So they're record enabled. Um, I'm just going to, you know, I've already kind of done a sound check. I already set the levels on the preamp so that they're not awful. But like if this were an actual recording session, I'd be a little more careful about it. But I've kind of set them so they're not awful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit record. So I'm going to hit three on my numeric keypad. You can also do a command spacebar to start recording. Um, if you Sometimes your OS might override some of these shortcuts, but you can also do F12 to start recording. There's a few ways you can start recording. You can also um, go up here and hit the record enable button for your whole session and then hit play and that will also start recording. This might look slightly different on your computer. So if I go to this drop down here and make it not expanded, it'll look simpler like this. So you hit this record enable button, then you hit play. Um, there's a few ways you can start recording, but I'm gonna hit three on my numeric keypad. That's my favorite way to start recording. 
And now I'm recording. I'm recording to both tracks. My voice is going into all three of these microphones right now. And it's wonderful. So let's say this is the first take. You let the artist go through the first take, have a blast, see how it's going. And then when they're done, you can either set it to loop record, which is a whole other thing that I will not cover in this video. But you could be loop recording. Um, but if you're not loop recording, you're going to stop it at some point. And then what I like to do is click here to create a new playlist. So new playlist for take two. And you'll notice since I did it on one, it did it on the other. So they're now synced. So this way I can't easily forget to cycle onto a new playlist or to duplicate the playlist. Once you get into duplicating playlists, you can really confuse yourself. Um, so if I do it to one, it does it to the other. So again, I hit record. It's great. They're doing their second take. Everyone's super happy. We're all gonna be rock stars. I'm gonna unzoom this audio so it's like a little smaller here. That's just visual. This doesn't change how it sounds. Um, but I'm going to pause it. And let's say they had a great first half of the song, but not so great second half of the song. So let's say we wanna start right around here. We like zoom in, we pick that spot, right? We're like, all right, this is where we're gonna start. What you can do is if you wanna have pre-roll on, right? You can do Command K and that'll activate this orange flag up here. I have another video about this. I can put a card on the screen. Um, but you can have it so it starts playback a little before where you actually hit record. And then let's say I want to record the second half. What I can do is I can actually hit record first and then I can choose to duplicate the playlist. And what that, that'll do is it'll save this whole thing as one playlist and then this will be a duplicate. So when I record over this, it's not like gone or forgotten really is what it is because you could always drag it out right but it's not forgotten so I'll do that really quick this is the way I like to do it is they're like all right I'm ready for another take let's go you want to be really quick you want to hit record so see how it played back there because I had pre-roll on and now it's recording and now all I have to do is do this before I hit pause so duplicate and you'll notice that that went from one to two so now this is a new playlist with a duplicate of this one that's the same as the previous playlist and this one's being created. And then we hit pause. So I hit spacebar to pause. I could create a whole new playlist. So now it's three. And now if I wanna record just over this part, I'm gonna do command K to deactivate this pre-roll. I can do that. And you just kind of form whatever you're gonna form, right? So sometimes people like doing whole takes all the way through and it'll all be nice and clean and pretty when you're done. Sometimes it's like, you know, parts of the song at a time. It's kind of like depends, it depends on what the artist wants to do, right? But once you're done now, you can click on waveform on either of these. What I would do is I would actually make that so it's not record enabled, right? We don't wanna accidentally record over anything. And then what I would do is create a whole new playlist and then I might name these comp. So this is where we're gonna create our comp, which is like our composite of all the takes that we like. I'm trying to like avoid these cables here, comp. And now if I go to my playlist here on one, it's gonna have the other track also open up the playlist view, right? We're seeing a pattern here. So now let's say I want to listen to this bottom take for both of these. I can hit solo and I'll listen to both of them. Oh, let me unmute. So notice when I unmuted and unmuted both of them, it's all because they're grouped. So it really helps you keep everything organized and not mess up, right? If you group them together. So let's listen to both of the mics at the same. It might sound funny since they're not like phase aligned or anything. I can do that. And you just kind of form. So that's really, really great and exciting. So what you can do, like, let's say we want this part. I can highlight that and then hit up to my comp. And now let's say we want to listen to this take. It's great. They're doing their second take. Everyone's super happy. We're all going to be rock stars. Played back there because I had pre-roll on. And now, so let's say I want this part for my final comp. I can just push that up. And same thing. You just keep going through and you listen to the different takes. Um, but I'm going to. And you pick the parts you like. And then you just push them up to your main comp. We're going to do this one without listening to it. But you want to listen and be careful and like choose the sections you like, right? And that's basically it. That's how I navigate things when I'm trying to do multiple takes with multiple microphones at once that are on the same sound source. Um, it really helps you stay organized. It's really, it's nice too, because once you get into like editing, you can leave them grouped. And for example, if I want to 
trim this out, it's going to trim both of them. If I want to add a fade, it adds a fade to both of them. This has saved my butt with like drum tracks, especially when you have like a whole bunch of microphones. It's like that would be maddening to have to do the fade over and over on like, you know, six or 10 different mics or, you know, depending on how crazy you go with the microphones, which I sometimes do. But um, yeah, that's it. I'm just holding command so I can do this not on the grid. But yeah. Um, I think that's about it. I don't, I don't know what I left out. Let me know if I didn't explain something thoroughly enough and I'll, I don't know, explain it better in another video or something. Um, and let me know if this helped you. And other than that, if you like videos like this, please consider subscribing. Come connect with me on Instagram. I'm at Kato Noise on Instagram. And I have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. I also have some new merch that we just made. And it's kato.threadless.com. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thanks so much for hanging out. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to wear my glasses more. So here I am wearing my glasses more. But what's funny is like I've, I'm doing this to try to give my eyes a bit of a break from my contacts, but I am completely blind. Like I can see this tiny window of space that clearly and everything else is is blurry. So my vision's really, really bad. But um, I I think I sat on these glasses. I think it was when I was in the dorms for my in-person term in New York uh, over over the summer. But I, I sat on them. And so, like, you know, like this part of the glasses, like the front part, there's like a bend to it. Right. Now it's flatter. And so what happens is they fall off my face like so much more easily. And the other day I was getting off the toilet and they fell off my face when I looked down and it almost fell into the toilet. And it was like this slow-mo like, no, and I, was, I was so upset. And then they didn't fall. They like fell to the left of the toilet, which was which was good. But then I had to clean them. Anyway, that's my um, thrilling, thrilling bit of information for my life. OK, I think I should go now. <laughs> OK, bye.